Shalom, Saint Shalom. <laughs> oh man. It's gonna be a good one right here. <laughs> this is gonna be a good one. But <clears throat> before I get started, man, I'm gonna tell you like Yehoshua said. Cause it's important that, you know, as you become you know, start to be uh start to come into this truth. Hey, you got to come at it like a child. You got to forget all that stuff that you've been taught. And you got to learn again. To be taught as a child again. What do your host would say? Unless you become as one of these, talking about the little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of Yah, the kingdom of heaven. So when you when you come into this truth, man, you got to come at it as a child. You got to be, you know, as one uh you know, uh, wean to the milk until you until you start to, to get the meat of the word. So you got to come at it as a child, and that's in the scripture too. But what we what we talking about today, man, <laughs> man, this is why I stay in the word every day, and it's such a blessing. Y'all's been blessing me so much, staying in the word and uh, seeking after this truth. And uh, breaking those chains of lies that they took off our neck and put on our heads, huh? Breaking them chains, them walls, and them strongholds and principalities who who continue to put curses upon us, huh? That that go around and campfires in the dark with their pagan idols and pagan gods putting curses on the children of Israel, <laughs> man. The strongholds, we don't fight against the flesh, but against principalities and strongholds and Jezebel spirits inside the churches and governments. Man, what we about to, what we about to go over today is deep. I'm about to blow your mind. You hear me? Your mind about to be blown. And it's a good thing, because you need to come at this as a child. You need to come at this as a child. Forget all that stuff you've been taught in the church. Forget all that stuff you've been taught. Let's let's get into the word and let's break it down the way y'all want us to break this thing down. Hmm. Hold on for your seats, man. But before I even start in the word, come at this as a child. You know, what the, what the words say, be quick to hear, slow to speak, huh? And slow to wrath, quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. So be quick to hear. Get some paper, pen, Whatever you need to do, jot some notes down or rewind this video to your to your heart's content. Because it might it's gonna be a long video. And it might be in the two parts. Just warning now, because it might go over. Because <laughs> there's a lot of information. A lot of information in the scripture. So before we even start in the in the word, and well we're gonna start in the word, but before we start in the uh the regular uh Bible, we're gonna go into the pocket for this is important. Man, I found this out. This this answers the whole this answers the whole big question. Cause remember, I told you, those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said in the last days, those who call on the name of the Lord should be saved. Huh? So what's the name of the Lord? <laughs> what's the name of the Lord? Y'all say it all the time when y'all singing and praying. Yeah. It's his name, hallelujah. But you try to, you know, you try to tell Christians and other brothers that who are stuck and don't want to relearn and don't want to come at this thing as a child, they don't want to call him by the name Yah. They want to call him God. Huh? Didn't even the devil himself, don't they even call the devil himself God? <laughs> don't they call Satan God too? Those who worship him? His name ain't God. His son name ain't Jesus. That only came about since the 16th century. And what happened to in the 16th century? Huh? The children of Israel went into slavery. Deuteronomy 28. Okay? The 16th century. That's when the Greeks and the Romans and Latins changed the name from Yahushua, Yeshua to Jesus. Huh? Which was also the name of the slave ship. And why they changed the name to Jesus? Because they wanted to pay honor to Caesar Borgia, the son of the bastard, son of the Pope. <laughs> Pope the uh the sixth. Huh? Man. 
So we know his name ain't Jesus, because that name only been around for the 16th century. Yehoshua uh, would been around since the beginning of time, especially to the Hebrews. And that's what they would have had known him as and what they would have called him. If, if we had the ability to time travel and you would have went back and during the time when Yehoshua was on the earth, or even before Yehoshua was on the earth, during the days of Abraham and them, um, or even King Solomon, or King David, huh? <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, like, like, even the King Herod days. You think they would have known the name of Jesus? <laughs> They'd be like, who? Who? Who is Jesus? Yeshua. Oh, Yeshua. Yeshua. The Messiah. Yes. Huh? All right. So why is his name important? We're going to get into that. Because those who call on the name of Yah, those who call on the name and his son named Yehoshua shall be saved. Okay, the name is very important. <laughs> the name is very important, especially to the Hebrews, because how they know he was even a, how they do a census upon the uh, the children of Israel back in the day, huh? They went by their names. <laughs> they went by their names. And who was part of what house and that house? They went by their name. Same way we do our genealogy. We search our genealogy uh, of our ancestors back by our names. So a name is an important thing. Okay? You know, that whole made up name Jesus is, is, is not it. You're not going to be able to be saved. Now, the Lord may have, Yah may have mercy on you. Hmm? But you're not going to receive all that blessing as if you would have called him by his real name. <laughs> We're going to get into that. Uh, if you got the Apocrypha, we're going to start here, because this is very important, very important. I'm going to start in the Apocrypha. I'm in the Joseph Lumpkin version of the Apocrypha. We're going to go to the book of Syrac, I mean, not the book of Syrac, but the book of Solomon. I mean, the wisdom of Solomon, okay? So go with me to the, wis uh, to the wisdom of, of, of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, King Solomon, huh? He seen this thing firsthand, cause we gonna talk about King Solomon uh, during the King Solomon's days when he seen uh, Jezebel, uh, the Jezebel spirit, and he described it in the Bible. King Solomon uh, described the Jezebel spirit in the Bible. But before we even get there in this Bible, we are gonna go to the Apocrypha. We I'm on page three eleven in the Joseph Lunkin version in the wisdom book of the uh, wisdom of Solomon. Okay. This is very important. Listen. Listen. Be quick to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. Okay? Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. It says, and again, with, uh, wisdom, chapter 14. So the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. It says, again, one preparing to sail and about to voyage over raising waves calls upon a piece of wood more frazzled than a ship which carries him. What is he talking about? Huh? This is, this is, this is, this is very important. This is what he's talking about. This is in the book of wisdom of Solomon. See this image? That piece of wood, that graven image? This is what wisdom of Solomon is talking about, y'all. This is what he's talking about. It says, it says, for, for it was desire for gain that planned that vessel, and wisdom was, crass, was the craftsman who built it. <laughs> but it is thy providence, O Father, that steers its course, because thou hast given it a path in the sea and a safe way through the waves, showing that thou canst save from every danger so that even if a man lacks skill, he may put to sea. I'm talking about a piece of wood. It says, It is, it is uh, thy will that works of thy wisdom should not be without effect. Therefore, therefore men trust their lives even to the smallest piece of wood. <laughs> even to the smallest piece of wood they trust their lives. Huh? 
even to the smallest piece of wood they trust their lives. Uh, it says, in passing through the billows on, the, on a raft, they come safely to land. For even in the beginning, when arrogant giants were perishing, what happened to the day in the days of Noah? Huh? We had giants upon the earth in the days of Noah. Okay, everybody know that, right? This is what he's talking about. Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. It says, when arrogant giants were perishing, the hope of the world took refuge on the raft and guided by the hand left to the world <clears throat> the seed of a new generation. Talking about Noah and his family. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Huh? It says, for blessed is the wood by the righteousness comes. But the idol made by, it says, but the idol made with hands is a curse. Huh? The idol made with hands is a curse. And so, and so is he who made it. Because he did the work and the perishable thing was named of God. Huh? Wisdom. Chapter 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. But the idol made with hands is a curse. And so is he who made it because he did the work. And the perishable thing was named to God. <laughs> For equally hateful to God, what well, says God in here was named Elohim. For equally hateful to Elohim are the ungodly man and the ungodliness and his ungodliness. For what was done will be perished together with him who did it. Therefore, there will be a visitation also upon the heathen idols because through part of what Elohim created, they became an abomination and became traps for the souls of men and a snare to the feet of the foolish. <laughs> for the idea of making idols was the beginning of fornication. Okay? The idea of making idols such as these, huh, was the beginning <clears throat> of fornication, spiritual fornication. was the beginning of spiritual for fornication. And the invention of them was the corruption of life. <laughs> and the invention of them was the corruption of life. Hold on, just a sec. Okay. All right. It says, for neither have they existed <clears throat> from the beginning, nor will they exist forever. So these things didn't exist in the beginning when Noah and his ark laid their foundation on Mount Ararat in Armenia. Huh? When they found when they when they landed in Armenia on, on Mount Ararat. This wasn't this wasn't this wasn't nowhere in existence, these graven images. <laughs> It says, for though, if it says, for through the vanity of men, they entered into the, enter the world. Therefore, they speedily, their speedily end has been planned. <clears throat> it says, for as for a father consumed with grief and an untimely bereavement made an image of his child who had been suddenly taken from him, and he now honored as a god. What was once a dead human being and handed on to his descendants secret rites and initiations. So who is who is this image of JC that's on this cross? The image of, of uh Pope the the fifth. I mean the sixth. Pope Alexander the Sixth. That guy. His son, Caesar Borgia, the bastard son. Who was what? Huh? A pervert and a homosexual. <laughs> a pervert and a homosexual. And he died. He died. <laughs> Where does it say? <clears throat> it says Caesar, <clears throat> Caesar Borgia has been the subject. According to the New World Encyclopedia.org, okay, talking about the legacy of Caesar Borgia, Caesar Borgia, 
Huh? Says Caesar Borgia has been the subject of many legends regarding his ruthlessness and cruelty. He and his father, Pope Alexander VI, are considered by many to be the epitome of power, hunger, hungry corruption surrounding the Renaissance papacy. Huh? Cause we know during the 16th century, if you do, if you go to college or went to college, and you read about the Renaissance era during art, huh? <laughs> during art and history, part of your uh, college and 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 uh, and uh, high school teachings. The Renaissance art period, basically, it was corruption. His family became the brunt of sermons by the likes of uh, puritanical preachers such as Savonarola. And it says, it says a little known fact about Caesar Borgia is that according to the French writer Alexander Dumas and others, <coughs> His handsome appearance seemed to influence many images of J.C., who y'all call Jesus Christ, painted during and subsequent uh, to his career during the Renaissance era. So we know Caesar Borgia is the bastard son, the homosexual <laughs> pervert of Pope Alexander VI, okay, during the 16th century, huh? when the name of J.C., what first came about during the 16th century when us Negroes went into captivity. Huh? So let's go back to this image. So after Caesar Borgia died, what, what, what does the Book of Wisdom say? That they made an image. <laughs> it says, For a father consumed with grief and an untimely bereavement made an image of his child who had been suddenly taken from him, and he and he now honored as a god <laughs> with a lowercase g. What was once dead human being and handed on to his descendants secret rites and initiations. Then the ungodly custom, growing strong with time, was kept as a law, and at the command of monarchs, graven images were worshipped. Huh? Graven images was worse. We're talking about this image was worse. <laughs> this image was worse. That the, that uh, Pope Alexander the Sixth made a, uh, graven images to his son that he may become a god. The same sex, homosexual perverted son who they made beautiful. And we're going to get to that because it's in the scripture. It's in the it's in the word. Come on, man. Hey, Y'all need to wake up. Look at this thing as a child, like your host was said. Come into this as a child. You know? Learn all over again as a child. Hmm? Not under bondage. You said those who you host were free and, and free is free indeed. Free your mind. Let's get it. It says, <clears throat> verse 17, wisdom, uh, book of, uh, wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 17 says, when men could not honor monarchs in their presence since they lived at a distance, they imagined their appearance, they imagined their appearance far away and made a visible image of the king whom they honored so that by their zeal they might flatter the absent one as though present. Then the, uh, uh, then the ambition of the craftsmen impelled even those who did not did not know the king to intensify their worship. It says, for he perhaps wishing to please his ruler, skillfully forced the likeness to take more beautiful form. Because we know Yehoshua was a, he wasn't no beautiful man. <laughs> he wasn't no beautiful black man. Huh? He wasn't no beautiful black man. And they always making these images look all beautiful and whatnot. Huh? Trying to make them look all beautiful. Hmm. Like Caesar Borgia. <laughs> it says, And the multitude attracted by the charm of his work, now regarded as an object of worship, the one whom shortly before they had honored as a man. 
It says, and this became a, a hidden trap for mankind. <laughs> you know what he said? It's become a hidden trap for mankind. Because men in bondage, in slavery to misfortune or to royal authority, bestowed on objects of stone or wood the name that ought not be shared. What was that name? Huh? They bestowed on objects. They bestowed on objects of stone or wood the name that ought not to be shared. Huh? What name did they bestow on these objects made of wood and stone? Huh? They ought not to be shared. Jesus the Christ. Hmm? JC. When we know that this name only came about 6th to 16th century at the uh, Pope Alexander the, the Sixth son, Caesar Bourget, whom they painted the image after this afterwards. Who this image, uh, who this image was painted afterwards. They made these graven images to be worshipped. And, and what? And called on that name. And bestowed on objects of stone, stone and wood the name that ought not to be shared. <laughs> Come on, it's in the Bible. It's in the Word, man. Right here. It says, afterward, it was not enough for them to, for them to err about the knowledge of Elohim. It was not enough for them to... to to, to err about the knowledge of Elohim, but they live in great strife due to ignorance. <laughs> so due to ignorance, they live in, in punishment and pain. Huh? Y'all go through all these, y'all go through all y'all children being slaughtered while y'all sitting in the church house. Huh? Praying to JC when that wasn't his name. Huh? Praying to this image when this wasn't his image. Huh? Talking about Lord, heal me, help me. Uh, and if He had mercy on you, because He was like, You so ignorant, I'm going to help you because I got bigger plans for you. But please stop calling me by a name that's not to be shared according to the scriptures. Put that on your mind. Think about it. Mm. It says, Afterward, it was not enough for them to err about the knowledge of Elohim. But they live in great strife due to ignorance. And they call such great evils peace. They call on the name of Jesus for peace. When that name ought not to be shared because that's not his name. <laughs> Man. It says, for where do they kill children in their initiations? Or celebrate secret mysteries? Or hold for not, uh, frenzy uh, rebels with strange customs. <laughs> they no longer keep either their lives or their marriage pure, huh? But they either treacherously kill one another, man, or grieve one another by adultery. <laughs> and all is a raging riot of blood and murder, theft and deceit, corruption faithlessness, torment, and perjury. Now, this is in the book of Solomon, the wisdom of Solomon. That's why I say y'all need to get these other books. Huh? The same people that told you not to get them is the same people who brought you the image of, in the name of J.C. Huh? Who you going to believe, y'all or your enemies? Man. It says, verse 26, it says, confusion over what is good. Forgetfulness of, fav of favors, pollutions of, the, of souls, sex perversion, disorder in marriage, adultery, debauchery, huh? For the worship of idols not to be named, <laughs> the worship of idols not to be named is the beginning and the cause and end of every evil. For their worshipers either either rave in exaltation or prophesy lies, huh? Or live unrighteously and say, as long as I go to church on Sunday, I'm good. And the rest of the week, I can eat pork and shrimp and party my behind off, huh? Because I know Jesus is going to save me. You hear me what I'm telling you? Man. And it's right here in your own word. 
But y'all don't, y'all don't hear me because y'all don't hear y'all. <laughs> y'all don't hear me because y'all don't hear y'all. Hmm. It says, or, read or readily commit perjury. For because they trust in lifeless idols, they swear wicked oaths to ex uh, and expect to suffer no harm. <laughs> they trust in lifeless idols. They trust in this cross. They trust on the image of JC, or that white man when Yehoshua wasn't even white. He was a black man. An ugly black man at that. <laughs> man. Y'all better, y'all better wake up and stop playing with the most high. Huh? Y'all trusting these lifeless idols. Huh? Come on, man. It says, verse 30. But just penalties will overtake them on two accounts, because they through wickedly of Elohim and devoting themselves to idols, and because in deceit they swore unrighteously through contempt for holiness. <laughs> for it is not the power of the things which men swear, but the just penalty for those who sin that always uh, pursues the transgression of the unrighteous man you need to write that note jot it down go find it save your life so why is the name of Yah so important hmm. why is the name of Yehoshua so important and not them other names or me the book of Enoch if you got it hmm. Book of Enoch, chapter uh, 46. I'm on page 400 if you're in this book. Book of Enoch, chapter 46. Verse 1, it says, And there <clears throat> and there I saw one whose face looked ancient. Hmm? That means he couldn't have looked like Caesar Borgia, who only came about, that paintings and that name only came about in the 16th century. <laughs> the one whose, whose face looked ancient. His head was white like wool. Huh? We talking about the same one. Okay? Whose head was white like wool. Huh? His feet was unto fine brass. Hello. Hmm. Hello. It says, And with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man. And the face of full of graciousness like the one of the holy angels and I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning the son of man who he was and where he came came from and why uh, he went with the ancient one why he went with Yah why he ascended back up to his father to go prepare what? a place it says and he answered and said to me this is the son of man who's, who has righteousness, with whom dwells righteousness and whom reveals all treasure, all the treasures of that which is hidden. Because the Lord of spirits, because Yah has chosen him, whose lot has preeminence before Yah in righteousness and is forever. And, the son of man, and this son of man whom you have seen shall raise up the kings and the mighty from their seats and the strong from their thrones and shall loosen the reins of the strong and break the teeth of the sinners. And he shall put down the kings from their thrones and the kingdoms because they do not exalt and praise him. How do we exalt and praise him in this highest name? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nor humbly acknowledge who bestowed their kingdom on them. They won't acknowledge that his name was Yah. They are rather call him God. Or well, even Satan they call Satan God. Huh? They won't acknowledge the name of Yehoshua, but they acknowledge the name of JC, who the white Romans created. The same ones who, who brought our behinds over here, huh? 
<laughs> during the 16th century. It says, and he shall make the strong hang their heads <laughs> and shall fill them with shame and darkness shall be their dwelling and worms shall be their bed and they shall have no hope of rising, rising from their beds because they do not exalt the name of the Lord of Spirits, which is what? Yah. <laughs> the name of the Lord of Spirits, his name is Yah because they do not exalt that name. That's why it's important. It says they raise their hands against the Most High and tread on the earth and dwell on it. And all their deeds manifest unrighteousness. Their power rests on their riches. <laughs> Who run around here rich? Huh? Their power reigns on their riches. And their faith in, is in the, in the gods which they have made with their hands. Huh? Their power is in their riches. All their gold, wood and gold that they made. Yeah. Their power says, rests on their riches. And their faith is in the gods which they have made with their hands. They deny the name of the Lord of Spirits, huh? Which is Yah. They deny that name, but they really call him Jesus and God, huh? That they created. They created this. Man created this. Let's get it. Let's get into your Bible. So. We're talking about this Jezebel spirit. She's not, you know, Jezebel spirit doesn't mean a whore or a woman or a lustful woman. That's the spirit. If a woman is, is is being a whore and having a lustful spirit, then she got a spirit of lust and whore them upon her. Jezebel spirit is a whole different thing. It's who exactly who you looking at when you go to church on Sunday. That's your Jezebel spirit. That works to what? Preachers, pastors, churches, and governments. <laughs> Through witchcraft, huh? This is the Jezebel we talking about. Go with me to First Kings in your in your Bible, okay? First Kings. Chapter 16, verse 29. I suppose it's gonna be long. It's gonna be long. But I'm, it might be two video. First Kings chapter t uh, chapter sixteen, verse twenty nine. It says, and in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of Yah above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to be his woman Jezebel, <laughs> the daughter of Ethabal, king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshiped them. And he wheeled up an altar for Baal in the house a ball. Now, what we'll altar? <laughs> what we'll altar what he had reared up back in those days? Hold on just a second. Altar what they call oblis today would have been something like this huh he read up these altars unto ball these little columns what they call oblis today huh? it 
or as a repose. Okay, use as a repose to worship what Baal, the sun god. Hmm. Okay. So, to, so they will look more like this. Like that. Huh? All right. So, little imagery. All right. So, and worshiped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made an Azura pole. <laughs> so, what's an Azura pole? That, 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 that's also an Azura pole. But it's a lot of Azura poles. And y'all see them all the time. Y'all just don't be paying attention. As a repose, like they got in the church and uh and uh the Vatican. With the little images of the sun disc on them. Them little poles or columns you see in the churches. As a repose. Huh? Do you want to be better? Now they come in different forms now. They come in different forms. They come in different forms. <clears throat> Ball and Azura. Huh? The reef, the womb. Huh? The Azura pole, their tree. Worshiping the goddess fertility. Huh? That y'all celebrate on Christmas. Huh? You want better. Some of them Germans, they run around in circles. Around what? As a repose. As a repose. Huh? With a little star around it. They go around in circles. Hoping for fertility. <laughs> hey. Y'all better stop all this paganism. Worshiping ball. And who as a The same is Easter. The goddess Easter, the Samaritan goddess Easter, which they call Easter. Her name is also Azura. And y'all worship her on Christmas <laughs> and on Easter Sunday. Huh? She's an old Babylonian god named Easter, who the English call Easter, huh? Who also is called Lilith, the Samaritan god. Y'all listen to Drake and all that other kind of stuff talking about the OVO Isle. That's who he talking about. <laughs> when he talking about OVO, he talking about this. From the goddess of Easter, worshiping Babylonian gods. Man. As a repose. In the churches. In your homes. On these holidays. Huh? Some of y'all campgrounds doing circles around them. Huh? During Easter Sunday, putting the little eggs for the goddess of fertility. Do your research. I want you to do your research. I want you to. Because that's the only way you're going to get this. <laughs> don't, don't just believe everything I say. Go do it, your research yourself. That way, y'all can show you, open up your mind, and start knocking down them chains and wake you up before it's too late. Okay? It says, and Ahab did more to provoke Yah, thy Elohim of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. <laughs> Man. So, hold that spot. We're going to continue. As repose. So, remember the last video we was talking about the cherubims. Hmm, them ball worshippers. So we just showed you with the Azure poles, those Christmas trees, and those uh, pole columns and stuff who they worship for the goddess of Easter, who is also named Lilith and Azura, huh? the woman of ball, the goddess of fertility that y'all worship on Easter Sunday. Hmm. Who they make these obelisks and columns for. Hmm. These obelisks 
and columns for? Hmm? Same person. Go with me to Zephaniah. Hold your spot there. Go with me to Zephaniah. Let's see who these priests he talking about. The Sherman priests. Zephaniah chapter um, 1, verse 2. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 2. It says, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, says Yah. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the, with the, um, And the stumbling blocks with the wicked, and when I and I will cut off from off the land, and I will cut off man from off the land, says says Yah, and I'll also stretch out my hand upon Judah, and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place, in the name of the Sher uh, Shemaram Shemarims, with the priests. Remember, we was talking about the Shemarims with the priests, who are what? The sun god worshippers, dressed in black. <laughs> black uh, the sun god worshippers dressed in black. Let me find a picture. Okay. Shimmerim, so that works better. So we look up that definition. Man, this hot out here, boy. <laughs> but we're gonna get this in though. Because it's important, man. Alright. These cats. Huh? No, I showed you that the other day. Sun God worshippers, shimmerings, priests, dressed in black. Huh? They worship the sun god, Baal. That's who y'all worshiping. They call him Jesus. They call him Jesus, but his name is Baal. <laughs> Man. Huh? What do you got on there on that crucifix? Jesus. <laughs> Man. Look up definition. Definition. According to Bible Hub says, says render idolatrous priests. And priests in um uh, it says some derive this word from the Syrian Kimaru, meaning to throw down, and interpret it as a describing the idolatrous priests who prostrate themselves before the idols. Others uh, regard it as meaning those who go about in black or as sexists. The sexist means living that life <laughs> it's a lifestyle that's their lifestyle they dressed in black okay like these guys in israel shimmerims huh <laughs> who looking looking like some old pharisees huh sun god worshipers this is who y'all talking about It says, and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops. And them that worship and swear by Yah and swear by Malcolm. <laughs> and them that turn back from Yah and those who have not sought Yah nor inquired for him. Hold your peace at the presence of the Lord Yah. For the day of Yah is at hand. For Yah has prepared a sacrifice he has bid his guests, and it shall come to pass in the day of Yah's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and king's children and all such as clothes with strange apparel. <laughs> See, I'm about to punish y'all. Y'all ball worshippers dressed in strange apparel, huh? Come on, man. 
I better get it together. I was dressing in strange apparel. Sun God worshippers. Sun God worshippers dressed in black and strange apparel. Huh? Go with me to still hold your place in the uh, first kings. I'm trying to break this down so you can understand who the priests of Jezebel are. So the reason why I'm going here is so you can understand who the priests of Jezebel are. Who uh who Elijah uh had the people to to slew when when he uh uncovered their wickedness and their idolatry. Hmm. Huh? We 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 learn about who the who these priests dressed in black are. The same priests y'all call Catholic priests and uh high priest in Israel and so forth today. And even the ones in the in the Baptist and uh denominational churches under the rulership of the uh of the Vatican, huh? Wear y'all black suits and stuff to church, even y'all. Huh? That's what he said, I'ma visit Judah too. <laughs> See, I'm gonna visit Judah and Jerusalem and, 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 and push out the remnant of those ball worshippers. Hmm. So Jezebel is not a, 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 a whorish woman. Jezebel is a spirit of a, 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 a witch spirit. Okay? She 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 works in the midst of churches and governments. Hmm. That's who Jezebel is. She's not a whore. Now, if a woman to be a whore, like I said, or, or a lustful woman, she has a spirit of lust and whoredom on her. Jezebel's spirits are sun worshippers who worship the sun, dressed in black or ascetics. Man, that's their way of life, according to Yah, what we just read. Okay? Those are, uh, are shimmerams, shimmerims in the scripture, dressed in black. Strange apparel, huh? Priests, they call them priests, according to the scriptures. Hmm. Worshiping who? It's false image. Worship idols, made by hands. See all them Azra poles, huh? These are the Azra poles. Can you see them? See all these little columns they put up here, made with gold, huh? Those are Azra poles. As a repose, this is Caesar Bourget. This is the false name and image of Yehoshua, whom the Roman Catholics in the 16th century, who uh, Alec, uh, who was it? Uh, who made? Who, who drew? Let's let's go back to that. It's important you get this. <clears throat> it was. Uh, I want to say it was. Instead of me saying, let me just go. Hold on, let me give me a second. I believe it was... Who drew the images of Caesar Borgia? Oh, Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> I think it was, uh, I believe it was Leonardo da Vinci. Let me check. Let me check. Let me go back to that. Okay, so Caesar Borgia, like we was talking about earlier, that was the son, the bastard son, who was a homosexual and a pervert, who who died, and he wanted to pay tribute, so he made graven images of him so people could worship him. Okay, and the person who who made the images of Caesar Borgia was Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci says it right there. Leonardo, or oh, I can't see it. You might not be able to see it. Leonardo da Vinci is the one who created the image of Jesus Christ in the 16th century. See, JC, Leonardo da Vinci, huh? And they used the image of Caesar Borgia as the, it says. 
It says, in his handsome appearance, seems to have influenced many images of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. So we know Yehoshua wouldn't that look like that. <laughs> this, on, this image only came about in the 16th century. That's Caesar Borgia. That's your JC. <laughs> That's your JC. That's your, that's your man right there. We know Yehoshua was black. Died a black man's death. And those are those Ezra poles. They made with gold. Made out of wood and gold. With all these idols and false images. Huh? And them priests were the priests that dressed in black. Just like they dress in black, black and these Catholics and uh, Protestants and all these other churches y'all go to. Especially Judah too. Them same pastors too. They part of the Jezebel spirit. This is what the Jezebel spirit is. Her works is in the church and in the governments. That's why all nations, all the heads of states go and bow down and kiss who? Who they going to kiss? Uh, who they go bow down to? <laughs> Come on, man. See that see that shimmer rim dressed in black with his priestly robes on the top with his graven images and all of them going bow down to him? Whoever he is at the time? Huh? Say he come in peaceably like a lamb, like a white like a lamb, and speak like a dragon, having two horns. Y'all better cut it. <laughs> y'all better cut it. Let's go. So we in Hosea. Now, let's go to Hosea because I want y'all to understand this. Because we're going to get into this Jezebel spirit. Okay? But you got to know who the priests of Jezebel are so you can know what, you, what you're dealing with. Because you the same people y'all go to church and um, pay y'all, give all your money to, pay y'all tithes to, who are not even uh, Levites, who not even supposed to receive tithes. Huh? They're not supposed to get paid or receive tithes. Those are the Ahabs. Huh? The husband of Jezebel. <laughs> Those are your Ahabs. The pastors. Huh? And that Jezebel spirit causes men to do what? Who did Jezebel cause men to do? To worship idols. A ball. <laughs> worship false idols and graven images. Let's read on. So we in Hosea, chapter uh, in, in the book of Hosea now. We're gonna break this down about these about these false teachers and preachers. So you can know who the who the who the uh, who the foot soldiers of Jezebel is. Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10, verse 1. Okay. It says, Israel is an empty vine. It's an empty vine. Why is it empty? Because the children of Israel ain't there. <laughs> It's an empty vine. It says, he brings forth fruit unto himself. <laughs> so the people in Israel, they bring fruit unto themselves. That's over there now. It says, according to the multitude of his fruit, he has increased the altars. What altars? The altars unto Baal. Huh? They have increased these altars. <laughs> huh? According to the multitude of his fruit, he has increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made godly or goodly images. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found fault faulty. He shall break down their altars and he shall spoil their images. <laughs> he shall spoil their images. There you go. <laughs> uh, Shimmerims. Dressed in black. Worshippers of Baal. Worshipping the sun, sun God worshippers. In Israel. 
They have increased their altars with their graven images. Let's read on. And why I say they work in churches and government? Where they at? They work in churches and in governments. What's that flag back there? United Nations. Huh? The United Nations Assembly. Jezebel's spirit works through the government and the churches, y'all. She ain't a whore. She's a witch. Worshiping idols and idolatry. Let's read on Hosea, chapter uh, verse two, chapter ten, verse two. I mean, verse three actually. It says, "For now they shall say, we have no king, because we fear not Yah. What then should be a king?" It says, "What then should a king do to us?" Hmm. It says they have spoken words, swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus judgment springs up as a hemlock in the furrows of the field. And the inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Beth Haven. For the people therefore shall mourn over it, and the priests thereof that rejoiced on it, for the glory thereof, because it is departed from it. <laughs> it shall be, and it shall be also carried unto Assyria for a present to the king of uh, Yerah. Ephraim shall receive shame. Remember we was talking earlier about Ephraim and the Samaritans and the Syrians, how they was confederate against the house of Judah <laughs> and tried to take our land when we went into captivity. Hmm? He said Ephraim shall receive shame and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. <laughs> it says, as for Samaria, the good Samaritans, her king is cut off as a foam upon the water. The high places also of Aben, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. <laughs> the sin of Israel shall be destroyed. The, the, uh, it says, the thorn and the thistle shall come up upon their altars. And they shall say to the mountains, cover us. And to the hills, fall on us. Hide us from the face of Yah. Huh? <laughs> it says, O oh, Israel. You have sinned from the days of Gibba, and there they stood. The battle in Gibba against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. It is in my desire that I should chastise them, and the people shall be gathered against them, when they shall bind themselves in their two furrows. And Ephraim is an heifer that is taught. <laughs> she is a heifer that is taught. She is taught this... Uh, taught these things and loves to tread out the corn but I passed over there it says but I passed over upon her fair necks and I will make Ephraim to ride you, uh, Judah shall plow and Jacob shall break his clods it says so unto your it says so to yourselves in righteousness and reap in mercy and break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek Yah, till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Ye, you have plowed wickedness, and you have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies, because you trusted in your way, in the multitude of your mighty men. <laughs> Say what? You have eaten the fruit of lies. They're trusting in your own way. They trust in the, in the multitude of your mighty men, of they, uh, of they, uh, of they armies. Today, it says therefore shall a, a tumult, a riot arise among your people, and all your fortresses shall be spoiled. And Solomon spoiled, as Solomon spoiled, uh, Beth Abba, in the day of battle, the mother was, the mother was. Uh, dashed in pieces upon her children so shall Bethel do unto you because of your great wickedness in the morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off hmm. there's all these priests and these idolatry worship y'all trusted in um, in y'all lies knowing y'all the Jews and say to y'all Jews and are not <laughs> go with me to um
Okay. Uh, Isaiah, book of Isaiah. Well, no, I skipped that. Cause that's going back over um Syria, Ephraim, and uh and the Samaritans. When I went over that before. Alright, so rather go with me to the book of Revelation. Book of Revelations. So what me Revelation? We continue on talking about these uh these sun god worshiping priests and pastors. Huh? Working with the Jezebel spirit to make merchandise out of you and have you going out to worshiping false gods and idols. <laughs> with the book of uh, the wisdom of Solomon and Apocrypha, what we talked about in the beginning, talks about how uh, how these mighty uh, these kings and stuff on the earth made these images out of wood, made these idols that they trusted in, and caused men to uh, to sin against uh, Elohim. So Revelations chapter two, Revelations chapter two, talking about this Jezebel spirit in the churches. So Revelation chapter two. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start at verse nine, then I'm gonna go down to eighteen. Hmm. So Revelation chapter two, verse nine, says, "I know your works in tribulation and poverty, but you are rich." Talking about the house of Israel, and it says, "And I know the blasphemy, blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not." <laughs> But are the synagogue of Satan. But are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which ye shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, as you may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Now we know in the story of Jezebel, um, she used the priests and the pastors to do what? To put the true prophets of Yah who was trying to warn them of their idolatry into prison. So Jezebel controls the priests, the pastors, and the people to come against, come against the true uh, followers of, uh, 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 of Yah, of Elohim. So this is this spirit right here is a, it's a controlling spirit. She works through the churches and the governments. And then the people. Going me down to verse 18. It says, and unto the angel, it says, and unto the angel of the called out assembly in Dietaria, right. Hmm. These things says the son of Elohim, who has, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. <laughs> his feet are like fine brass, okay? It says, I know your works and charity and service and faith and in your patience and your works. And the last to be more than the first. <laughs> last to be, uh, the last to be more than the first. It says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because you suffer that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess. <laughs> and what is a prophetess? Huh? The women you see in churches today calling themselves prostitutes. Okay? I mean, they're prophets and priests, pastors, and so forth. It says to teach. Who doing the teaching? Huh? The pastors, the priests, prophets. Okay? To seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Hmm. To eat things sacrificed unto idols. Which would be what? What did they you do to sacrifice on the idols? So back in the day, back in the day, day, what they did was uh, concerning this Azareth, which they called uh, the the Israelite. It says um, the Israelite women baked cakes for the Queen of Heaven. 
who they call, who's the queen of heaven that they call in the church? Mary, the Virgin Mary, right? They call her the queen of heaven. Or the Madonna and child. It says they bake cakes for the queen of heaven, the mother of gods. The image was easier to produce in, uh, in bread dough. It says the Hebrew, uh, Hebrew and Canaanite women uh, molded loaves to this figure, which was blessed and ritually eaten. The precursor of the communion wafer, <laughs> the sun god image. You know the little circle images, the little circle wafers, like the one she got in her hand. <laughs> that they take communion in in them Catholic and Protestant churches. Says. It says her idols were found under every tree, and were carved in. And says were carved from living trees, or erected as poles or pillars, beside uh, roadside altars, crude clay images of her as tree of life. Hmm. Later involved into more refined Syri Syrian uh, Artemis. It says ancient six, uh, sexual rites dismissed uh, to this day by male scholars and cult prostitution as a cult prostitution associated with the worship of Azura. So these ancient sexual rites associated with Azura, which was what? That saying Azura is also the goddess Ishtar, the goddess of fertility. Where is that? Same as Ishtar, the goddess of fertility. That's Ishtar, the goddess fertility, or Azura, okay? Who they call Easter. That's why they put out them little eggs, okay? And then they cult practices in the churches. The, 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 uh, the Catholic priests used to take the virgins and have sex with them. That they may bless them with their seed. <laughs> so the goddess of Ishtar, or Azura. Okay. It says to worship Azura and share the maternity uh the matrilineal descent patterns with their par partnership rather than denominator values will continue. It says Hebrew priestly iconoclasts finally uprooted Azura, supplanting uh matrifocal culture with patriarchy. Patriarchy. It says as the cross began as a literal tree or pole <laughs> but later became an artistic expression Azura was styled as a pole in the form of an oblique or column or ch even church steeple as a symbol of sun worship or a ball the pole represented the sexual union which created all the earth's fertility or the sun worship okay The same stuff they got in the, in the uh, and this is a picture of uh, of the 40 A.D. Uh, Ablis from Helopolis, Egypt. That's why in the, in the word it says, "Don't trust Egypt." Don't trust Egypt. It says it's erected in St. Peter's in Rome. There go your Ablis, your sun god worship. Man. So let's read on. So now we to break. Now we're not. We're starting to put two and two together. These priests, these sun god worshippers, a ball, these obliques, these images, graven images, these crosses. <laughs> it says to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto Adam or to idols. So they're committing fornication. Okay, remember they said they were doing spirit, sexual spiritual acts. And they was baking cakes, <laughs> baking cakes with the crosses in it, uh, and eating a little circle sun disc for their communion wafers. When when the Yah said, uh, make you some shoe bread, and if you ever made shoe bread, it, don't, it ain't circle at all. <laughs> it's almost like a square piece of flat bread, you know, you roll out with the little rolling pin, okay? And then you bake that, you eat that. 
with a little wine. It said, And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, <laughs> and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that break red lock with her into great tribulation. So who going into great tribulation? Hmm? It's the true believers, because you know the true believers, uh, the true believers in your host they're going to they gonna rise and go to New Jerusalem when the dead rise. With these other cats who trust in their gods, huh? Uh, with those who trust in their gods, they're going to go into great tribulation. Huh? <laughs> Y'all better cut it. Yeah, I'm going to go into great tribulation. Except they repent of their deeds. It says, and I will kill her children with death. Ain't everybody in the church who crying out to JC, crying in tears now, when they sons and daughters dying out there in the streets? Huh? Did JC come save them yet? Nope. <laughs> and all that called out, and says, and all the called out assemblies, meaning churches, shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. It says, but unto you I say, and unto the rest of Dietaria, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, <laughs> as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. But they, but it says, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come, and he that overcomes and keep my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall be broken to shivers even as I received of my father and I will give him the morning star <laughs> we gonna be the morning stars true believers in Yehoshua the Mashiach who call on the name of Yah which he said it's important that we call on the name of Yah he don't want us calling him any other name. He don't want us calling him after this dude. Because we know that's not what he looked like. <laughs> we know that's not his name. His name is Jehoshua. His father's name is Yah. Those who call on my name, who those call on the name of the Lord, which the name of the Lord, Yah, shall be saved. Okay? And they become like the morning star. He said, I will give them him the morning star. So who's the morning star now? Who they call the morning star? Satan. <laughs> huh? The morning star is Satan. How are you following no star of the morning? Huh? <laughs> we gonna we gonna we gonna be beautiful and sparkling just like Satan was before he fell. It says, and he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the called out assembly. And who's the ones who supposed to have an ear to hear? The Israelites. Because <laughs> this word was for the Israelites, not the Gentiles at the time. Oh, man. Go with me to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. I said this is going to be a long video because we. I'm going to try to break this down. I'm going to try to break this down. Second, Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1 it says but there were false prophets among the people even as there shall also it says even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies even denying Yah that brought them that bought them <laughs> so even denying Yah that bought them. How did he bought them? Through his son Yehoshua. Not son Jesus. Not Jesus. Yehoshua was the son's name. That's how he bought them. And we are indebted in Christ. Are we not? Then he then he died on the cross for remission of our sins. He bought us. We are indebted to Christ. Uh, Yehoshua the Mashiach. Okay? And the name of his father was Yah who bought them and bring upon themselves swift, uh, swift destruction. 
It says, and as many, it says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even spoken of. They don't want to hear the name of Yehoshua. You go to your church now, and you try to tell them his name wasn't Jesus' name, Yehoshua, they're going to kick you the hell up out of there. <laughs> they're going to kick you up out of there. They don't want to hear that. They ain't trying to hear that. They won't call upon their name. Huh? They don't kick you smooth up out of there. It says, and they, <laughs> whom uh, the way of the of truth shall be even spoken of. So what did, what did Hosea say? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Huh? It says, by reason whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Okay? Who they praise. What name they love to praise. Even though they know that's his false name. Huh? They love to praise the name of Jesus. But you tell them his name is Jehoshua, they evil speak of it. They despise it. They hate it. Try to tell them Elohim is black. And not that white man they got sitting up here on the top above him. They hate it. They despise it. They despise the name of Yah. Huh? Says, and through their covetousness shall they with fame words make merchandise of you. <laughs> that means every every head they, they see coming in the pools, they and somebody back there with a clicker in their hand. Click, 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 click. Cause they know they're gonna get some money at you. <laughs> we gonna make merchandise out of you, brother. You gonna pay me your tithes and your offering, and you gonna take that. It says, who judgment now for of a long time lingers not, and their damnation slumbers not. When that damnation slumber, uh, slumbers not. Why? Why, is that, why does their damnation slumber not? Hold your place there. Okay? Want me to Matthew. Matthew chapter uh, chapter 7, verse 21, real quick. And we're going to go back to 2 Peter. So hold your spot, 2 Peter chapter 2. You want me to Matthew uh, chapter 7, verse 21. Okay, precept on precept, line upon line. That's how we get this thing. Why these false prophets and their damnation making merchandise out of you out the churches? Huh? Why their damnation ain't gonna, is, is not going to slumber? It says... Verse 21 says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, <laughs> shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? <laughs> and in your name have cast out devils? So they're going to say, Haven't we not prophesied in the name of Jesus? Uh, have we not cast out uh, devils in the name of Jesus? <laughs> it says, and in your name done many wonderful works. So who are these people? Are we talking about sinners or are we talking about church people? Church people. We're talking about church people. Calling on the name of JC, huh? Look what y'all say. <laughs> it says, and then, it says, and then will I profess unto them then I would profess unto them this key. I never knew you. <laughs> you wouldn't call it on me. <laughs> you would call it on another God. You would call it on the, uh, the image and the name of the beast. He would, yeah, yeah, I ain't never knew you. <laughs> I never knew you. Man, I never knew you. I never knew you. That's, that, that's cold blooded. That's cold blooded right there. Y'all calling on this man. And y'all said, when he, when he come, he going to say, ain't I, ain't I did what? He said, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? And in your name, have, not, have I cast out devils? <laughs> huh? And then, and then y'all say, I'm going to profess unto them. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. I never knew you. <laughs> I never knew you. Depart from me, you transgressors of the law. Huh? You workers of iniquity. And here it says, you transgressors of the Torah, of the law. 
It says, therefore, whoever, whoever, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken unto him a wise man. So if you can get this understanding what I'm trying to get to you, and I want you to take notes and research it yourself, and I want you to, you know, replay this or whatever, jot notes down and search it out for yourself. So that way you can start to get understanding. Okay? So you can start to get understanding. But he said, and all you're getting, get what? Understanding. <laughs> And all you're getting, get understanding. He said, I would liken him unto a wise man, huh? Which built his house upon a rock. And then the rain descended, and as the flood came, the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hears these saying of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, huh? Just like the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. Who had the name, the five wives had the name of Yah, huh? And had the Ruach. <laughs> the five foolish didn't have the name. That's why he just said, give away me, I know you not. <laughs> so the foolish man which built his house upon sand, and as rain descended and, 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 and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, it fell. And great was the fall of it. Hmm. Man. So now go back, uh, go back to 2 Peter chapter 2. And that's why their damnation slumbers not. So and if you want to be damned, keep calling him Jesus and keep calling him God. You better learn his name because his name is important. It will save you. Those who call on my name shall be saved. He could have easily told them his name, but it, it was already right in front of their face. But they denied his name. <laughs> they ain't want his name. It says, for if Elohim spared not the angels that sin, verse 4, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment. And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing, a, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that, are at, those that after should live ungodly, and deliver just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that, for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Man, it's like unto us. You know, especially unto me who know the truth and I'm, and I'm trying to give y'all the truth. But that's my only job. That's my commandment. Y'all told, what he told Peter and them to do? Go feed my sheep. <laughs> Go feed my sheep. And that's what I'm trying to do is feed the sheep. Because they're going astray. And we're going astray for way too long. For almost 500 years now. Since the name of Jesus came about. Y'all been going astray. Huh? Man. All these years in the captivity and slavery. Y'all Negroes ain't learned nothing. They ain't learned nothing. <laughs> learned nothing but to despise the name of Yah. And his son Yehoshua. Whom in the old time. Of ancient days. They called upon the name of Yah. Huh? Come on, man. Seeing and, 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 and seeing and hearing vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. All right. So it gets to you at the why. At the why, it's like, man, it's like, man, why don't my people just wake up? I mean, how long are they going to stay asleep? Because he knows that y'all say, I'm going to send them a strong delusion that they may believe a lie. Huh? And to put upon them a spirit of slumber so that they slay sleep. I want y'all to wake up. Okay? Verse 9 it says, Y'all knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Hmm. To be punished. Alright, uh, go with me to, now you can leave there. Now we're going to 1 Timothy. 
First Timothy chapter four. So we breaking this thing down. I said it's gonna be long. It might be two videos if they cut me off. So that's fine. Cause I want y'all to get this. So when y'all get done, y'all gonna be like, man, <laughs> man, I, I, I've been doing this thing wrong for too long. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. We still talking about these false prophets, these prophets of Jezebel, huh? These priests, these pastors, these uh, these government officials. It says, now the Spirit speaks expressly, verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, meaning the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Hmm. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So what is he talking about? The, 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 um, talking about the faith or what? Talking about the faith of, of Christianity? Huh? What was it before the Christianity? We was just some regular old Hebrews. <laughs> huh? We spoke in Hebrew, talked and walked in Hebrew. We lived a Hebrew life. The faith in Yah, who brought them out of the land of Egypt. Huh? Them Israelites in the land of Egypt wouldn't have known the name of Jesus. <laughs> huh? They, they didn't call him God. Even in your Bible, it said they erected altars and called it Jehovah, this, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh. Huh? Yah. But we're going to depart from that and go after what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's what it said. And I had a little article in here concerning these doctrines of devils that they like to push in these uh, Christian churches and these non-denominational churches. Um, what was it? Cause my daughter, she went, you know, she went with her friend to a church not too long ago. I think it was Sunday she went, and I let her go only for the reason that she could see for herself. <laughs> I want her to see. I want her to see the idolatry and wickedness for herself. And every time she come back and she be like, Daddy, I don't know what they doing in there. They got graven images. They in there got hexagrams. They got whole tables made out of hexagrams or pentagrams. They got pictures on the wall with one eyes. <laughs> one eyes. And they, and they reading out of books that we ain't even heard of. Talking about some, uh, they reading out a book called, uh, what's the name of it? Jesus something. It was something. I think I saved it. No, I saved it in here. Some, some author, some book, some author had made up. Let me see if I can bring it up. Jesus something. Oh, Jesus, uh, Jesus is calling, or Jesus is calling. <laughs> I think that's the name of the book that they reading. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. Jesus calling. That's the name they reading in these churches. <laughs> and that's the book that, uh, that's what she said they was reading in the church when she went. This book. Uh, doctrines of devils. <laughs> reading out of that by reading out of that book. It says Whatever. She said was saying something about the author was talking about how uh how she was channeling G Jesus and hearing from Jesus, and uh, <laughs> this is a bunch of crazy stuff. Basically, a book of divi di uh, divination, a book of uh, uh, domination. That's what it is, a book of uh, divination, seducing spirits. So she she wrote this book because she conjured up the spirit 
uh, of Jesus that's communicating, uh, supposedly communicating with her and talking with her and showing her all this stuff. And uh, <laughs> and this is the book they reading in the churches, huh? And we know his name ain't Jesus. So who is who is she? Who is uh she talking to? <laughs> Cause we know that Yah hid his face from the Israelites. He ain't showed us nothing. He ain't told us nothing. We gonna get in that too. But anyway, that was just one of the doctrines of demons. There's a lot of them. They're going to fall away from the faith of Yah and the son of Yehoshua. And do what? Take heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, <laughs> forbidden to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which Elohim has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature El Elohim is good and nothing to be refused. And if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of Elohim and prayer. <laughs> sanctified by the word of Elohim and prayer. So what is this meat? Is he talking about just meat like food? Huh? Let's get this. Say verse 6 says, if you put... If you put the, bre the brethren in remembrance of these things, if I put y'all in remembrance of these things, you shall be a good minister of Yeshua HaMashiach, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, where have, uh, whereunto you have attained. Hmm? So what are we talking about? Meats of uh, 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 food or meats of the spirit? Go and meet a uh, whole spot there. Go to Hebrews. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Hebrews, uh, hold your spot there. Go to Hebrews. There's a couple couple uh, chapters over. Hebrews chapter 5. What meat is he talking about? Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. It says, for when the time you ought to be teachers. Because remember, he just said, you shall be a good minister of uh, Yehoshua HaMashiach. How are you going to be a good minister? Because you're full and you're eating all these meats? <laughs> or are you getting the meat of the word? Huh? Chapter 5, verse 12 it says, for when, for, uh, says, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers. You have need that one teach you again. That's why I said at the beginning. I want y'all to come into what I'm telling you, and I want you to search it out for yourself. Okay? I want you to search it out for yourself. Okay? You know, don't believe everything I tell you. Go read it for yourself. That's how you learn. Okay? And you got to become like a child. Be willing to learn all over again. To get them, break them chains that they done put upon your mind after they took it off your neck, okay? And put it on your head. Going horn after these other gods and false idols and pagan holidays and religions, huh? You gotta be taught as a child, because you also said, unless you become as a child, like one of these, you should not enter in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> you gotta come in as a child, ready to relearn. It says, that, uh, it says, you have need to that, uh, that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of Elohim. It says, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. <laughs> the babies drink milk. Okay, so you need to be taught again so you can drink this word like milk. I mean, he's just thirsty. And would you, every time you give a baby milk, what? He finished that bottle? <laughs> and hey, if you come with another bottle, <laughs> give me, give me, give me. Thirsty. I'm like, man, you can't be that thirsty and hungry. <laughs> be thirsty for the word. Huh? But you give him that baby some meat, some chopped up, uh, chopped up meat or potatoes or whatnot. Every baby be full, be ready to pass down. Huh? It said, for everyone, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. 
for he is a baby. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Huh? Because when you get old enough, you can eat what? You can start eating steak. Huh? You can start cutting that, that meat, eating them burgers and stuff. It says, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So even those who have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So you ain't got to be a, a, a grown man, even a child, you know, who's able to walk and talk and read, couldn't, couldn't begin to discern good and evil. And you'll be fed the meat of the word, huh? Well, let's go. So we'll go back to me to 1 Timothy. So that's the meat he's talking about. That you may be what? A good minister of Yehoshua the Mashiach. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto you have attained, but refuse profane and old women's fables, and exercise yourself rather unto godliness, for bodily exercise profit little. So all that working out profits little if you ain't working out this. <laughs> you can be strong with this, but if you ain't got this, it profits little. Okay? But godliness is preferable unto all things, having promise of life that is now, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in, in the living Elohim, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. <laughs> These things command and teach. Let no man despise your youth. So just because I might be a young man who come into the truth and work this out right here, don't despise me. <laughs> don't despise me of my youth, brother and sister. Huh? But be an example of the believers in the word and conversation. But me conversating with you. Huh? And charity and spirit and faith and purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading and to exhortation, to doctrine. Stay in your word. Ne neglect, uh, it says, neglect not the gift that is in you. If you got a gift to teach, then you better go teach. Go feed the sheep. You got a gift to preach, then go preach. You got a gift to prophesy, go prophesy. Huh? <laughs> you got a gift of tongues, use it. You got a gift, use it. which is given you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands or by presbytery. Mediate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing so, you shall, you shall both save yourself and them that hear you. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. By me standing in this word, I might save my own soul <laughs> and everybody else who's listening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. All right, go with me to um back to Revelations. We're gonna get into uh, we're gonna get him back into um <laughs> Seems like we've been going, going here and going there, but I want y'all to get this. Revelations chapter 17. So who is who is this uh Jezebel spirit? Who's this Jezebel kingdom we've been talking about this whole time? And her priests and, and, and prophets. Huh? Her priests and her prophets. It says in, there, in verse uh, 1, chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. Talking about the church. <laughs> the Roman Catholic Church that sits upon many waters. Okay? It says, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And inhabitants of the earth have been drunk with the wine of her fornication. Hmm. 
It says, so she, so he carried me away in the spirit and into wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a, a colored beast. Oh, let me find this picture. So the woman sit upon scarlet colored beast. Okay. That same dragon that was in the last picture of uh, Hayek. I showed you the Armenia. Who was pointing to the tomb of Baal. Huh? That was on that white flag. There you go. It says, now one, I saw a woman sit upon scarlet colored beast. Full of names of blasphemy. Having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet in color. <laughs> uh, who's that back there in the back? Mother Mary. Huh? And purple and red. Purple and scarlet. Scarlet meaning red. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. <laughs> gold and precious stones and pearls. And all this going on. Find another picture for you. So, and it says, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was written, Mystery Babylon. <laughs> Mystery Babylon. And remember, uh, what was it, like a year or two ago? Oh, let me find this. The Pope says, Mystery Babylon. Actually, he said, enter into the mystery. <laughs> At the Easter Vigil. Huh? Remember Easter, what? The goddess of Easter? He says, Pope at Easter Vigil, uh, Easter Vigil entering the mystery. <laughs> he says, it says the Easter Vigil is a time for us to enter into the mystery which God has accomplished with his visual of love. That was the message of Pope Francis as he celebrated the Easter Vigil. What's the Easter again? The goddess of fertility huh, that y'all celebrate this pagan god in St. Peter's Basilica on Saturday night. And what it says in the word? Had that golden cup in her hand. And saying golden chalice he be raising up. Huh? Talking about what? And upon the forehead, meaning upon the forehead, meaning in, uh, on his mind. Okay, if you write it on your forehead, it means you put it on your mind, right? <laughs> Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk, drunken with the blood of the saints. <laughs> a woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yeshua and when I saw her I wondered with great admiration <laughs> so there's your harlot there's your mother of Babylon your mystery Babylon that's why I said we looking at her we looking at her Verse thir uh, chapter 13 says, and I stood upon, uh, verse 1 it says, and I stood upon the uh, sand of the sea and saw the beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. 
<laughs> them seven heads and ten horns. And uh, and uh and uh, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. <laughs> What's the name of blasphemy upon their head? Huh? What's the name of uh uh uh, uh name of lies that one under his name? <laughs> Come on, man. I gotta put this together, man. Hmm. It says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was a, as of a bear, and his mouth as a mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power in his seat. Power in, gave him power in his seat. Huh? And great authority. And I saw one of his heads was that wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. <laughs> and all the world wondered after the beast. Huh? And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who was uh, who was like unto the beast? Who was able to make war with him? We're gonna leave that there. Because that go back into that Gog and Magog war I talked about in the last videos. That beast, that beast system, which we looking at. All right, so let's go back. So we're going to continue reading them on about Jezebel. So now you got an idea of who the heck Jezebel, what Jezebel is, the spirit of Jezebel, and her prophets and priests dressed in black. Huh? Talking about Mystery Babylon, huh? <laughs> So now we're going to hear about the story of Jezebel. Okay, now we got that out of the way. So I want you to understand who these people is that work for Jezebel. That y'all go uh, worship uh, and, and sit up on there every Sunday. These Ahabs. You want me to... Um, in fact, go... In fact, I'm going to skip that part. Go me to chapter 18, 1 Kings chapter 18. So let's read about Jezebel and her prophets, dressed in black, who worship the sun god. Hmm? Who worship Baal, the sun god. Hmm. And Azura, the goddess of Easter, or Easter, the goddess of fertility. Madonna and child, huh? It says, verse, uh, chapter 18, 1 Kings chapter 18. It says, and it came to pass at the many days that the word of Yah came to Elijah, the prophet, in the third year, saying, Go show yourself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Because during them days, there wasn't no rain, because the river and stuff had dried up, and uh, Elijah was being fed by ravens. He was being fed both spiritually and physically, the word of Yah. Because there, no, there was no word of Yah in the land. Because Jezebel had all her prophets teaching how to worship idols and graven images. <laughs> and of prophets in the land worshiping the sun god. Okay? In the land of Israel. And that picture is from Israel. Okay? So this we know. Okay? All right. It says, And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared Yah greatly. So he was a man, he was a, he feared Elohim. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of Yah that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in the cave and fed them with bread and water. So who were the prophets? <laughs> the cherubims, the priests dressed in black, who we call today the, the, uh, the pastors, and, and, and the, uh, the Catholic priest and Protestant priest and all these other uh, <laughs> all these other priests of Jezebel making merchandise out of you telling you to worship the name of a, of a graven image and the false name of a, a false god huh and if you don't do it what they do either cast you out of their uh, out of they, uh, church or, 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 put, or try to put all kind of spells and witchcraft on you curses on you 
Oh, you going to hell. Oh, you going to be cursed. Oh, if you don't come give me your money, your tithes, and you don't worship JC, you going to die. Huh? That's what they do to you. <laughs> you going to get, we going to kick you out the choir. Huh? Putting all kind of curses on you. Now, if you scared to go to church, putting them curses on you. All right. Well, the internet be acting crazy around here. But anyway, so those are the prophets. So when we talk about her prophets, that's who we talking about. Okay. The priest, pastors, and uh, and those who who believe and worship their idols and and uh, Azura and Easter, the goddess Easter, and baking cakes for her and uh, making these crucifixes and grave images and calling the son of God at the name that wasn't none of his name. Those are, those are Jezebel's prophets. So he said, and Obadiah took a hundred of the prophets and hit them in the, in the cave, hit, uh, hit them fifty in the cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, go into the land unto all the fountains of water and unto all the brooks pre-eventually we might find we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive. Hmm. He said, "When y'all do, when y'all say, when y'all say, when y'all do wickedly against me, I'ma utterly consume man and beast from off the earth. I'ma cause famines and droughts and everything else." So it says, it says that we that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout. It says Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. It says, and as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Are you, are you that my lord uh, Elijah? And uh, Elijah, and he answered and said, I am. Go. Tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. See, that's why we don't call him Lord. That's why we don't call the Most High Lord. <laughs> we don't call him Lord like that. He has a name. Because what they would, even, even humans was going around calling each other Lords. Huh? Kings and Lords and all that. It says, um, and he said, verse uh, 8. It says, and he answered and said, I am, go tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, what have I, what have I sinned? <laughs> that you would deliver your servant into the hand of Ahab <laughs> to slay me? You know, Ahab was the king of Israel at the time. It says, and, 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 and Yah, your Elohim, it says, as, as Yah, your Elohim lives, there is no nation or kingdom whether my Lord has not sent to seek you. <laughs> As Yah lives, there is no nation or kingdom whether my Lord has not sent to seek you. <laughs> he has always sent someone to seek his people. And when they said, it says, and when they said he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found you not. And now you say, go tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. <laughs> and it came to pass, as soon as I am gone from you, that the spirit of Yah shall carry you whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find you, he shall slay me. <laughs> but I, your servant, fear Yah from my mouth. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of Yah? <laughs> how I did a hundred men, uh, how I hid a hundred men of Yah's prophets by fifty in the cave. <laughs> so, so uh, Obadiah, he so he feared Yah, so he went he wouldn't hid the prophets of Yah. Okay, and the prophets of Yah wouldn't have been wearing no. Uh, black priestly robes and all this stuff. Heck no, nah, they were just some regular old people. He wouldn't hear them in the cave. The prophets of Yah. <laughs> it says, hmm. 
It says, and fed them with uh, bread and water. It says, and now you say, go tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. <laughs> and Elijah said, as Yah of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto, unto him today. So as Yah uh, of Yah of hosts lives, for sure I'm going to show myself to Ahab today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and uh, told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Are ye he that troubles Israel? Because <laughs> remember, Ahab was king of Israel. He had every, you know, he had all his prophets of Jezebel worshiping these idols and false gods and, and all this other stuff going on. So he asked him, are you him that trouble? Are you come to, to shake up what we got going on? You come to shake up the foundation? <laughs> what we got going on? Ain't that what they tell you when you go to church? And, and, you, and you try to tell them the truth? And they try to tell you, no, that's not what that mean. No, you just listen to pastor. He'll direct you. He'll lead you. <laughs> you better read it for yourself. It leads you all right, right to that bank. That's it. Let's go. <laughs> so he says, it says, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel. I said, I ain't come to trouble Israel, but you and your father's house, <laughs> and that you have forsaken the commandments of Yah. So he said, I ain't the one who troubled Israel. You did. You and your father's house. Huh? That you have forsaken the commandments of Yah. And what they tell you in the church today. Oh, we don't have to keep those commandments. That was of the old covenant. We ain't gotta we ain't gotta keep all that no more. So wasn't tithes and offerings in the old testament? And wasn't in the new testament? Oh, but that, yeah, you got to keep that. You gotta keep that, but you don't have to keep your friends. You uh you don't have to uh to keep the uh you know the uh, uh, the adultery ones and uh, and all the other stuff. You know, you can be homosexual now. You can be whatever you want to do. You know, because you ain't got to keep those old Testament commandments. You just got to keep the one to say, "Give me your uh, tithes and offer." <laughs> Come on, man. It says, "And you have followed ball. You have followed ball <laughs> or Belin." It says. Now, therefore, send and gather me to all Israel unto Mount Carmel. So he said, go get all of Israel and tell them, come on, let's go to Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, 450. So he had, Baal had, the prophets of Baal, who worshipped uh, under uh, the, uh, the, them Azra poles and them graven images, the prophets of Baal were 450 of these cracks. Huh? It says, and the prophets of Azura, who worship the Azura poles, huh? The goddess Ishtar. So the ones who worship the goddess Baal, which was the male, and Azura, the female, the fertility god, were 400. So all together, there was how many? 400 plus 450 is what? 850. 850 of these cats, of these priests and false prophets. <laughs> In the land of Israel. It says, was eat at Jezebel's table. Huh? They all eat at Jezebel's table. They all eat the fruits and the tithes and the offerings at Jezebel's table. It says, so Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mark Car uh, Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? How long have you been between two opinions? Do I serve Yah or do I serve Baal? Huh? Do I serve? Do I do I do I um do I keep the uh the Passover or do I keep Easter? Do I keep do I do I did I uh celebrate Christmas or do, or do I celebrate uh Hanukkah? Huh? How long you been between two opinions? <laughs> it says if Yah be Elohim, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. 
And then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of Yah. <laughs> but Baal prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves. So let, let's put them to the test. Let's see who's going to come and save them. Huh? Let's see who's going to come save them. It's going to be JC. It's going to be Yehoshua. Let's see. Let's put them to the test. It's going to be God. It's going to be Yah. It's going to be Baal. It's going to be Yahuwah. Let's put them to the test. It says, let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullet and lay it on the wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods. <laughs> and I will call on the name of Yah. And the Elohim that answers by fire, let him be Elohim. So whatever God answers by fire, let him be God. <laughs> it says, and all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Hmm. We know, we know my God, we know our God is going to answer this. <laughs> and verse 25 says, And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullet for yourselves, and dress it first. For ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, and put no fire under. And they took the bullet which was given them, and dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until evening. I mean, from morning even until noon, saying, Oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Jesus, hear us. Uh, oh, Jesus, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them <laughs> and said, Cry aloud. For he is a God, either he is talking, huh, or he is, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or pre adventure he sleeps and must be awoke. <laughs> so cry out to him. Keep crying out to him. Like they're doing today. Keep crying out to him. Lord, if Jesus, why does that happen to me, Lord? Oh, Lord Jesus, why does that happen to me? Y'all better cut it. So it says, <laughs> verse 28 says, and they cried aloud and cut themselves. They even went so far to cutting their wrists. Huh? They cut themselves after the manner, after their manner, with knives and lances. Till blood until the blood gushed out upon upon them. They was appointed like, yo, we know you're here. Jesus, come, 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 come burn this down. We got the shoulder, them, them prophets of Yah, that, hey, that, 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 that Jesus is Yah, that Baal is, 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 is Elohim. Huh? It says, and it came to pass when midday was passed, and they prophesied unto the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded and Elijah said unto all the people come near unto me and all the people that came near unto him and he repaired the altar of Yah that was broken down and Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob a number to, uh, who are the sons of Jacob the, the, the uh, 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> okay. Unto whom the word of Yah came saying, Israel shall be your name. Israel shall be your name. Uh, not Baker, but Israel. Uh, not Edwards, but Israel. Hello. <laughs> Names are important. Especially when you're dealing with this. The name of Yah is important. Verse 32, it says, And with the stones he built an altar in the name of Yah. And he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. 
and he put the wood in order and cut the bullocks in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill, your, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. So do it again. So I want you to drench this thing. I want you to drench the altar, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the bullet. Uh, I want you to drench the whole thing. So it'd be good soaking wet. <laughs> so do it a second time. And they did it a second time. He said, do it a third time. I want it really wet. I want all this water on it. I want it really wet this time. And they did it a third time. And the water ran down about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. So he said, I'm going to fill the trench also with water. I'm not, I'm going to soak the altar. I'm going to fill the trench too. We're going to fill it all with water. We're going we gonna to flood this thing. <laughs> It said, verse 36 said, It came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Yah, Elohim of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that you are Elohim in Israel, <laughs> and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Yah, hear me. That this people may know that you are Yah, that you are Yahuwah Elohim, and that you have turned their hearts back again. <laughs> so they may know that you are Yah and turn their hearts back again unto who? Unto Yah. Away from Baal. Huh? Away from all these false names of his son. It says, verse 38 says, Then the fire of Yah fell. And consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their face. And they said, Yah, he is Elohim. Yah, he is Elohim. And Elijah said unto them, unto them, meaning the, the people that saw this, the house of Israel. Because remember he said gather the whole house of Israel uh, <laughs> to Mount Carmel. He said unto them, take the prophets of Baal. Take these fake prophets and priests. And let none of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. They killed them boys. All 450 of them false prophets. <laughs> slew them. And Elijah said unto, unto uh, Ahab, get you up and eat and drink. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. <laughs> so Ahab went up to eat and drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, go up now and look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there arises a little cloud of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and get you down. Get you down uh, that the rain stop you not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind <laughs> and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel and the hands of Yah was on Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel <laughs> chapter 19 says and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain the prophet, all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message, a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do unto me, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I will make not your life as one of them by tomorrow about this time. <laughs> so he said, Let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not your life as the life of them. By tomorrow this time. So if I don't kill you by tomorrow this time, 
let the guys do unto me and more also. And when he saw that he arose and he went for his life and, and he came to Bersheba, which, belonged to, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Now I'm going to go past this part because you can read this part on your own what uh, Elohim uh, told him to go do and go back and not be scared of Jezebel and her prophets but go and do exploits so now we're going to go to uh, chapter 21 let's see, how, let's see how treacherous this Jezebel spirit is working in, in these false prophets and in these governments Verse 21, chapter 1. And it says, And it came to pass after these things that Nahal, uh, the, uh, the Israelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel. And, and uh, it says, It says, Hard by the place of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spoke unto Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give for you a better vineyard than that, than it. Or if it seem good to you, I will give you the worth of it in money. And Naboth said unto Ahab, Yah forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto you. <laughs> so Yah is saying, oh no. God forbid, Yah forbid me to give, me, uh, give my inheritance unto you. And Ahab came into this house heavy and displeased because of the word which neighbor, the Israelite, had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid down upon his bed and turned away his face and would not and, and would eat no bread. Verse 5. But Jezebel, his woman, came to him and said unto him, Why is your spirit so sad that you eat no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spoke unto Naboth, the Israelite, and said unto him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it please you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. And Jezebel, his woman, said unto him, you remember this vineyard, you know, when, when y'all come and gather his saints and his elect, you know, we're going to have vineyards. That's part of the promise when he brings us new Jerusalem. We're going to have vineyards and we're going to have olive trees and we're going to have houses and we're going to dwell in a city of gold. Huh? That's our inheritance. We ain't supposed to give it to no others. We're supposed to give our inheritance to no one else. So here he say, So Jezebel, his woman, said unto him, Do you now govern the kingdom of Israel? Huh? Arise and eat bread and let your heart be merry. And I give you the, and it says, Now I will give you the vineyard, a neighbor, the Israelite. <laughs> so she wrote, uh, a letter in Ahab's name. See how treacherous she works? She wrote a letter, a letter in Ahab's name and sealed them uh, with his seal and sent the letter unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city. So this Jezebel spirit and wrote this letter that caused the people to, to put their hands upon him. Huh? That was in the city and says, dwelling with neighbor. And she wrote in the letter saying, proclaim it fast and set neighbor on high among the people and set two men, sons of uh, Belial, of Bilal, of Baal, the sons of uh, ba uh, Belial, of Bilal, the sinful people worship Baal, before him to bear witness against him saying, you did blaspheme Elohim and the king. So who they call Elohim? Who did the ball lights call Elohim? Ball. <laughs> so you did blaspheme Elohim and the king. And then carry him 
out and stone him that he may die. And the men of his cities, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the, in the letter which he had sent unto them, they proclaimed a fast and set neighbor on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Baal, and sat before him, and the men of Baal witnessed against him, even against Naboth. And the presence of the people saying, Naboth did blaspheme Elohim and the king. But that wasn't the Elohim they was talking about. But because Naboth feared the real Elohim, Yah the Elohim, the people was like, he blasphemed? Well, we got to stone him to death. <laughs> So that's just like you going to church telling them, hey, his name is not God, his name is Yah. His name is not Jesus, his name is Yosua. <laughs> they be right in the blast, they be like, blast me, they be ready to stone, you can't, you'll throw you in jail. Huh? Because they don't want to hear the truth. They refuse it. Hmm. It says, and they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. And that, and it says, then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. Verse 15 says, and it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, arise, take possession of the vineyard. <laughs> take his inheritance. He dead now. Take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Israelite. It says, which, which he refused to give you for money. For Naboth is not alive, but dead. And it came to pass where Ahab heard that Naboth was dead. And Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Israelite, to take possession of it. Verse 17. It says, and the word of Yah came to Elijah, the Tish, uh, Tishbe, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, <laughs> which is in Samaria, which is also in the land of Ephraim today, Israel. Okay, the Samaritans, the Samaritans. It says, Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it. And you shall speak unto him, saying, Thus saith Yah, have you killed and also taken possession? And you shall speak unto him, saying, Thus says Yah, In this place where dogs lick, lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick your blood, even yours. And Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, O mine enemy? Hmm. And he answered, I have found you. <laughs> Peekaboo, I found you. You thought you was going to hide out, huh? I found you. It says, Because you have sold yourself to work evil, in the sight of Yah. Behold, I will bring evil upon you and will take away your posterity and will cut off from Ahab him that pisses against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah, Ahijah for the provocation Wherewith you have provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And Jezebel also spoke, and of Jezebel also spoke Yah, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. <laughs> him that dies of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. And him that dies in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. It says, but there was none, verse 25, but there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of Yah. And what do you see our pastors doing today? Selling themselves to work wickedness in the sight of Yah. Deceiving the, deceiving the sheep. Leading them astray. Every time Yah talks about these pastors in his Bible, it ain't never good about them. They say, y'all lead my people to stray. Y'all deceive my sheep. Y'all make merchandise out of my people. Y'all cause them to worship false gods and idols. Huh? <laughs> it says, whom Jezebel, his woman, stirred up. 
the spirit of Jezebel. And he, and he did very abominably in following idols, according to all things, as did the Amorites. <laughs> Who are the Amorites and the Moabites, the Jordanians? whom Yah cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard the, those words, that he rent his clothes and put on upon, and put sackcloth upon his flesh, and fasted, and lay in sackcloth, and went softly. And the word of Yah came to Elijah the Tishbe, saying, See how Ahab humbled himself before me? <laughs> and I told him that the dogs going to eat your, eat your blood. Now he want to humble himself. Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring evil upon his house. I told you, yeah, he visit he visits the uh the third and fourth generations. And one more, and that's gonna be I'm about time. Uh, y'all can finish reading on, but let's read and find out what happened to old Jezebel. Let's find out what happened to Jezebel and uh, Ahab's son. See, it became the past. Chapter 9, uh, 2 Kings. Go with me to 2 Kings, chapter 9. 2 Kings, chapter 9. Give me one second. Let me, uh... Oh, forget it. We'll get rolling. 2 Kings, chapter 9, verse 1. Hmm. Well, actually, we ain't right now. Oh, uh, let's go to. Yeah, we start there. It says, And Elijah the prophet called on one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up your loins and take this box of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth, Galilee. And when you come thither, look out there, uh, look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi. And go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head. And say, Thus says Yah, I have anointed the king, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. It says, So the young man, even the young man, and uh, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth, Gilead, and when he came, behold, captains of the host were sitting, and he said, I have, I have an errand uh, to you, O captain. And Jehu said, unto which all of us? And he said, to you, O captain. So Jehu was no punk. Jehu feared Yah, and he was a warrior. Okay, He was a sword of Yah to pay vengeance on <laughs> uh, Ahab and uh, Jezebel. So let's read on. It says, He arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head. And he said unto him, Thus says Yah, Elohim of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of Yah, even over Israel. And you shall smite the house of Ahab, <laughs> your master. Huh? You shall smite him, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets. Huh? So what you think, and I, if Yah sent Ahab, a prophet of Yah, to smite these false prophets, these pastors of uh and pastors of uh of Jezebel back in the day. What you think is going on today? <laughs> Why you see all these people going attacking these churches and stuff like they doing? Huh? And then they like to turn around and put curses on you. Huh? Yah is the one sending these well, I can say Yah is the one sending them. But he allowed them to do what they got to do. Okay. He allowed them to do what they got to do with some people. So he says, And shall I smite the house of Ahab, your master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of Yah. And at the hand of Jezebel, <laughs> for the whole house of Ahab shall perish. And I will cut off from Ahab him that pisses against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the sons of Basha, and the sons of Ahiah. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in, port, in the portion of Jezreel. And there shall be none to bury her 
and he opened the door and fled. It says then, uh, verse eleven. It says then Jehu came forth to the servants of his lord, of his lord, and one said unto him, Is all well? <laughs> Wherefore came this mad mad, mad fellow to you? <laughs> and he said unto them, You know the man and his communication. So they knew he, Jehu was a mad man. He, hey, he was a warrior. He, was a, he come to slave folks. And they said, verse 12 says, And they said, Is it false? Tell us now. And he said, Thus, and thus spoke he to me, saying, Thus says Yah, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then, he hast, then they hasted, and took every man his garment, and put it under him, on the top of the stairs and blew with chauffeurs saying Jehu is king <laughs> now they feared Jehu because they know Jehu was a warrior Jehu wasn't playing so Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat the son of Nimshi conspired against Joram now Joram had kept Rome of Galilee he and all Israel because of Chazel king of Syria but King Joram was returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him. And when he fought with Cheziah, king of Syria, and Jehu said, If it be your minds, then let none go forth nor escape out of the city to go to tell it in Jezreel. So Jehu, Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel. For Jor uh, Joram lay there, and Acacia, king of Judah, was come down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman on the tower of Jezreel, and he spied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company, and Joram said, Take a horseman and send to meet him, and let him say, Is it peace? So there... <laughs> So he said, is it peace? So he wondered why he was coming. Is it peace? We well, didn't know he made, made you king. Is it peace? Hmm. I said, so there went one horseman, uh, horseback to meet him and said, thus says the king, is it peace? And Jehu said, what have you to do with peace? Turn behind me. <laughs> what you got to do with peace? No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace, huh? <laughs> he said him down there, I mean, and they, they saying him come. They say, is it peace? Is it peace with us? Nah, ain't no peace. <laughs> ain't no peace. I'm coming with a sword. I'm coming to slay y'all. He said, turn, uh, turn behind me. He says, and the watchman told, saying, the messenger came to them, but he comes not again. <laughs> yeah, he was even gone. He said, the messenger came to him, but he comes not again. He says, then he sent out a second on horseback, which came to them, and said, thus said the king, is it peace? And Jehu answered, what have you to do with peace? Turn behind me. And the watchman, and the watchman told, saying, he, he came even unto them, and, and comes not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi, for he drives fiercely. <laughs> so he, he, he coming, he, when he rode that horse, he rode that horse. Yeah, 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 he rode that horse with some fear. He, he, hey, he was coming to slay people for yeah. He wasn't coming for no peace. That's why they, they sitting on the little horseman's out. Is it peace? Is it peace? Like, nah, ain't no daggone peace. <laughs> Just as no peace. <laughs> it says, and Joram, and Joram said, make ready. And his, and his chariot was made ready. And Joram, and Joram king of Israel, and uh, Akaziah, uh, uh, king of Judah, went out, each in his chariot. And <laughs> it says, and they went out against uh, Jehu. So they figured, hey, Jehu, he wasn't coming in peace. He riding with, he riding with fury. He coming, he coming for us. So let us ride out and meet him. So they came and went out against Jehu, and met him in a portion of Naboth, the uh, the Israelite. And it came to pass when jo uh, Joram saw Jehu, that he said, "Is it peace?" And Jehu 
<laughs> is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, what peace? So long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are, uh, and her witchcrafts are so many, there ain't no daggone peace. <laughs> now, how do we incorporate, uh, how do we incorporate that today? What do you see my people out there doing? No justice, no peace. And they get the faith leaders out there, no justice is peace. And here you got Jehu, a man of Yah, that Elohim, saying, what peace? Huh? So long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many, as long as y'all suffer, as long as y'all worshiping false gods, false idols, and calling uh, the name of uh, the son of God, the son of Elohim, by false names, huh? That wasn't none of his name, and ain't trying to seek Yah, nor his son Yahushua, there ain't gonna be no peace, in other words. What peace? What you got to do with peace? Hmm. What you got to do with peace? He said, verse 23, it says, And Joram turned his hands and fled and said to uh, Akazia, there is, there is treachery, O oh, Akazia. And Jehu drew drew a bow. <laughs> he drew a bow, a bow with his full strength. So he drew a bow. He drew a bow there with a full strength. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, huh? He said with a full strength, and smoke joy ran between his arms, and the arrow went at his heart, and he sunk down in his chariot. <laughs> he got him. He got him. Sure did. <laughs> got him. It says then said Jehu to uh, the big guard, his captain, take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth, the Israelite. For remember how that when I rode, it says, when I and you rode together after Ahab, his father, Yah laid this burden upon him. Because remember Ahab took uh, uh, Naboth's uh, inheritance through his uh, treacherous wife Jezebel. So he slew him with that bow and arrow. He said with a full strength. <laughs> Man. It said, it said, verse 20, it says, Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons, saying, Yah, says Yah, and I will requite you in this plot, says Yah. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of the ground, according to the word of Yah. Verse 27 says, But when Azekiah, uh, uh, the king of Judah, saw this, he fled by the way of the garden house. <laughs> and Jehu followed after him and said, smite him also in the chariot. <laughs> Kill him too. And they did so at the going up to Gur, which is by uh, Iblim. It says, and he fled to Megiddo. Or Megiddo. Okay. What we call, what we're going to call Armageddon today. Megiddo. In the valley of Megiddo, and died there. It says, and his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem, and buried him in his sepulchre with his fathers in the city of David. And in the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, began uh, began uh, Akazia to reign over Judah. Verse thirty. It says, and when Jehu came, I said, when Jehu was come to Jezreel. Jezebel heard of it. <laughs> Jezebel heard of it when he came to Jezreel. And she painted her face and tired her head and looked out of a window. So she heard that King Jehu was coming. So she said, let me get pretty for him. Let's see if I can seduce him too. Huh? <laughs> Verse 31. And as Jehu entered in, in at the gate, she said, has Zimri peace? Is there peace? Who slew his master? Has Zimri peace? Who slew his master? And he said, uh, and he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out him two or three eunuchs. <laughs> so two or three people looked out the window. Yeah, yeah, we on your side. <laughs> And he said, 
throw her down. <laughs> throw her down. Throw Jezebel down. Uh, so they threw her down and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall. <laughs> and, and, and on the horses. And he tried her underfoot. He tried her under the foot of the horses. So they, the two or three units, they threw Jezebel out the window. Yeah! <laughs> she fell out of the ground. Her blood sh splattered on the wall. Landed up under, under, under the horses. And the horses tried her body under the foot. Huh? <laughs> and when he was come in, when Jehu was come in, he did eat and drink. So <laughs> Jehu went in to, into the house and got him something to eat and something to drink. He was parched and said, Go, see now this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And it says, And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than a skull, <laughs> than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. That's it. That's all they found her when they went to go bury her. It says, Wherefore they came in and told him and said, and he said, this is the word of Yah, which he spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishbe, saying, And the portion of, Jezre and the portion of Jez uh, Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field, and the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. <laughs> Man. Man. So y'all want to play with y'all? Y'all keep playing with y'all, huh? <laughs> y'all send them dolls to eat her body. Threw her from a window. And that probably had to be a far little window too, because they chumped up out the window. <laughs> the dogs ate that witch. You hear me? Mm -hmm. All that scheming, conniving witch. They ate her. But her spirit still living long. Her spirit still walked the earth just like the other evil spirits. And what is in? It's in the churches and the governments, in her prophets. Hmm? It's in her prophets now. So now we know who the prophets of Jezebel is. Now you know you got a glimpse of the story. Now you can go read the whole thing as entire because I want you to. Okay? And then definitely go back. Everything that I said and read, go back and research it yourself. You know, so that we won't lean on to our own understanding, you yeah? I want you to go study this thing for yourself and learn the ways of Yah. Because Yah ain't played with them. And look what we're doing now. He sure ain't about to play with us when he come back. What I told you last time in the video, there ain't going to be no just up out of here and going to no heaven. We got work to do. We're going to be bearing bodies for seven years and seven months, bearing bodies and weapons. The people who did not call on the name of the Lord, which is what? Yah. Huh? We did not receive his son, Yehoshua, the Mashiach. We received the image and the name of the beast from the 16th century of Jesus Christ. Now, I know it hurts, and I know it hurts deep. That's why he said it's a two-edged sword. The word is a two-edged sword. It cuts you, the reader, and them that you reading to. <laughs> so it cut both ways. And it took me a while to come, uh, to come up off that name. It took me a while to have uh, to, to rethink this thing and, 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 and forget all that I learned and restudy the scriptures for myself. And stay studying. Stay in study. Day and night. Searching it out. And then bring it to you. When I learn it, I'm bringing it to you. So you can go search it out, you know, so we can get there. Because we got somewhere to be. We got stuff to do. We got people to bury in the end, you know. There's going to be blood and guts everywhere. going to be birds eating the flesh off of people. <laughs> the animals going to be eating the flesh off of people just like the dogs ate Jezebel. Huh? Y'all thought this thing was going to be pretty? It's going to be ugly. That's why he says the great and terrible day of Yah. <laughs> So if you want to make it, you want to make it into New Jerusalem to get your inheritance, that vine yard, huh? And that olive tree and that house in the cities of gold, rivers flowing of milk and honey. He said, you better call upon my name. <laughs> you better call upon my name. 
We got to get that. It's the power, and the power is in His name, and through faith. Okay. Name and through faith. Well, y'all have a blessed day, man. Cause I'm ready to I'm ready to go relax now. I'm ready to go relax. Give me something to eat and drink, and continue studying. And uh, like I say, rewind this video, play it again and again, take notes. I want y'all to take notes. And uh, cause I'm gonna slide this over to YouTube, so you can go check it there on my YouTube, and I'll send a Facebook link. And uh, and then I'm gonna put all the the the, uh, the scriptures and chapters that we read and whatnot in there. And the links, uh, you know, to the articles and pictures and stuff that we found. So, so you can have it. You can have it to study. Free of charge. I ain't charged you nothing. Okay? I don't want your tithes and offers. You understand? I'm giving you this thing freely so you can go learn of Yah and learn His ways. So you won't be deceived. Because we've been deceived for over 500 years. We've been deceived since the 16th century. <laughs> it's time, far time to wake up now. Far time to wake up now, because it's almost over now. <laughs> Don't wait on that day for Yah to come and be like the hypocrites, the, the prophets of Jezebel, talking about, Lord, Lord. <laughs> then we prophesy in your name, then we cast out demons in your name, and he say, I never knew you. <laughs> I ain't never knew you. You weren't calling on my name. You calling on another name. You calling on another God. And he say, Y'all shall... Thou shalt have no other gods before me, huh? For I'm a jealous God. What y'all thought that meant, huh? <laughs> but um, y'all have a blessed day. Y'all have a blessed day. And uh, just know that Jezebel works in the churches and in the governments. And they control and both go hand in hand. They say it's a separation between church and state or church and government. They work, they go both a hand in hand. That's why all the presidents go and what? Go bow down and kiss the pinky ring of who? <laughs> Whoever the Roman Catholic Church is, uh, or, the, or the Pope is at the time. So how's that separation when y'all go and bow down and kissing their pinky ring? Huh? Come on, man. Jezebel working in both the church and the government to deceive the people, to lead them astray, and cause uh, Yah's prophets to, 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 to be killed and put in prison and to die and go to hell. <laughs> so, y'all can believe in that mess you want to. Study the scriptures, learn it of your own. Hey, be led by the Holy Spirit. He said be led by the Holy Spirit, not by man. <laughs> we know the name of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach. Ruach HaKodesh. But y'all have a blessed day. Shalom.